This week we're going to look at how to use data from the GFS to do something that we normally just talk about in theory, which is look at geostrophic and ageostrophic flows with a vector breakdown. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to take a look at how to calculate the geostrophic and ageostrophic component of winds using data from the GFS model or output from the GFS model. Now we've talked about how to get data from the GFS before and we have a lot of code to write so we're going to go through that relatively quickly. From siphon.catalog we're going to import the TDS catalog object and the best GFS, I'm going to create an instance of TDS catalog, http colon slash slash threads dot ucar dot edu slash threads catalog grib incep gfs and we'll go ahead and line wrap so this looks a little bit nicer. We're going to get the global 0 0.25 degree catalog dot xml and then for the data set, grib, incep, gfs, global, 0 0.25 degree, best. So in this case, it looks like we just need a slash there. All right, now we have a valid URL. I'm going to list on that best GFS catalog datasets values and the first one. We only have one thing in this catalog that's returned and that is the best GFS. That's what we want for our best dataset. We're going to use the NetCDF subset service. We're going to create an instance of subset on our best dataset. And then we're going to create a query. NetCDF subset service query. Now if we look at the variables that are available, we can pick and choose what we want. I know that we're going to need heights, isobaric, and we're going to need winds on an isobaric surface. So we come down here, V component of wind isobaric and U component of wind isobaric. So now we know the names of the variables that we want. I'm going to do some more imports from date time, import the date time object, create a query with a lawn lap box north of 50, south of 25, east minus 75, west minus 122, that should cover most of CONUS, with the time being datetime.utc now, so that's going to give me the closest to the present time in the best GFS dataset. Tell it that we will accept netcdf4 as our return type, and for variables we know u component of wind isobaric, and we can go ahead and copy V component of wind isobaric. And the geo potential height isobaric. So that has created our query. Now from X ray dot backends, I'm going to import the net CDF for data store object and import X-Ray. Our data is NCSS dot get data and we pass that our query object, which is actually going to go download the data. And then I'm going to use the open data set method.
on our data. So we have that as an x-ray. And we could list our data just to see what we get back. This will take just a second because we are going out and actually gathering all of that data. And we get back the U component, V component, geopotential height, and lat lons. So that looks good. We've also talked about that sometimes the time variable is named something different, and there's this handy helper function that we have written called find time var. And basically what we're doing here is we're looking for something that looks like time could be time one, time two, just time in the coordinates. So for our chord name in the chords attached to our variable, if the chord name starts with the base name, our time base name, then we're going to return that variable. And if we make it all the way through and we don't have any that match the pattern, we're going to raise a value error. It says no time variable found. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and break out some variables. When u is my returned data, the u component of when isobaric. When v in my return data is the v. The heights are the geopotential height isobaric. Our time, which we know is going to be 1D, we can get from our find time var, and we can just pick U or V, it doesn't really matter, they're going to have the same time base. All right, now we need to do a few more imports. From metpy.units, I'm going to import the units registry. I'm going to import numpy. And we're going to import metpy.calc because we're going to use the geostrophic calculation from that. Now we know that the latitude and longitude are going to be one dimensional, and we're going to need a two dimensional grid to do our plotting. I'm going to go ahead and get those. I'm going to use the U component of wind, use our metpy accessor longitude. latitude, and then we'll create a lon 2D and lat 2D array using NumPy's mesh grid on lon and lat. Okay, so now just to simplify and reduce the amount of typing uh, later on in our plot here, I'm going to create variables called uwind, vwind, and height that are just going to contain the data that we need. So this is wind u, which is all of our potential time steps, though we only have one here, and all of our isobaric heights. But I am now going to select for an isobaric height of 50,000 pascals, or 500 HPA. Okay, now I'm also going to index select on time and just get the first time index because we only have one time that we requested, which is the closest to now. And that's going to work the same for all of these our vwind and our heights. We're just gonna create a single height there. So you can actually see here, right now, time one is our time variable. So doing my I select, I actually need to put time one here. Now we're finally ready to calculate the geostrophic and A geostrophic wind components and do our plot. So geostrophic U and geostrophic V are going to come from metpycalc.geostrophicwind, which is going to take our height field 
And because this is a, an X-ray data array, it has Latin lons attached to it. MetPy can go in and calculate uh, the DX and DYs for us and calculate the Coriolis parameter for us. We don't have to provide all of that. Okay, so we've got geostrophic U and geostrophic V calculated. Now it's time for ageostrophic winds. The ageostrophic wind is just the U and V wind minus the predicted geostrophic U and V components. Now when I get the values out of this, I'm going to need to reattach units from the actual model output data. So ageostrophic U is going to be our UN dot values times units meters per second minus geostrophic U. And we recreate that for V. Now we have our geostrophic and a geostrophic components. Okay, so now we're finally ready to do our plot, which means we've got a lot more imports. Import matplotlib, dot pyplot is plt, import cartopy, dot crs is ccrs, import cartopy dot feature is c feature. And that should be all that we need. I'm gonna create my figure. We'll create an axis. And for this, we'll just use plat curry. We'll use a flat projection. We've talked lots about how to do different projections. We'll set our extent to be minus 122, minus 75, 25, and 50 to match the data bounds that we've got. We'll go ahead and add a feature, C feature dot states with a gray edge color. And let's see how that looks. Okay, so we got most of Conus here in our plat curry projection. We could go ahead and modify our bounds a little bit if we wanted. just to get a little bit more complete picture. All right, that'll work. And now we're going to plot the geostrophic and ageostrophic wind vectors. So for this, we're going to use quiver and we're going to plot our 2D longitude, our 2D latitude, the U component of the wind, and the V component of the wind. Now it's always a good idea to do just a couple things and take a look at the map and tweak as we want. So now we're gonna add a contour, our lawn 2D, lat 2D, and let's just start out with our height, make them black lines. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we have just a few contours and way too many wind barbs is what I'm seeing. So we need more contours and fewer wind barbs. So for the contours, let's see, we'll specify some levels here. I'll use NumPy's A range. We'll go from 5,000 to 6,000 meters in steps of 20. And now we know we're going to have to decimate the ageostrophic and geostrophic components just like the full wind vector. So I'm going to create a slice that has no start, no stop, but a step of seven. Okay, we note these are 2D, so I'm gonna to need to apply that slice in each dimension. And let's do that for lat, lawn, U wind, V wind. And we need a comma here as the error message suggests. Okay, so this is looking better. We've got our contours. 
Now we could make those a different color. If we wanted to, we could make those say tab red just to help things stand out. Okay, and we've got our wind vectors. So now we need to go ahead and basically just use this line a couple more times, except instead of plotting U wind and V wind, now we're going to plot geostrophic U wind and geostrophic, a geostrophic U wind, and same for V. Geostrophic U, geostrophic V, a geostrophic U, and a geostrophic V. Now to make these different, I'll use some color. We'll make magenta for the geostrophic, and we will go with a green for the ageostrophic. Now, obviously there's a little bit of work to do here. We can make our plot look a little bit nicer. We can scale things in, but on the whole, we start looking and we see the total wind vector, the geostrophic component, and that ageostrophic component. So we can start looking at where this clearly breaks down and talk about with our students why we have this ageostrophic component of wind. We can look at it at different levels. And this is a map that you could make every class period if you want to talk about things like this as different systems move through. I hope that you found this useful and we'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.